to another episode of Smoke Meat with Jeff. Grab your Guinness because we're going to make something special today. Uh, I'm not going to be firing up my smoker today because today is all about prep work for uh, making a special barbecue sauce for future projects. So I'm going to go over some of the ingredients that are required for uh, my Guinness based uh, uh, barbecue sauce today. Uh, just going over the basics on the ingredients but uh, not necessarily the proportions. Uh, if you're looking for that, check down in the information section. Down here, if you are uh, uh, watching this on YouTube, or click in the corner if this is an embedded video to switch over to YouTube, uh, and I have the proportions of all of the ingredients listed there. For today, you're going to need a bottle of Guinness, and of course you may as well just buy a six pack because uh, you need something to keep you hydrated while you're, you're working on this. Ah, oh, it's a great beer. Um, Non-food ingredients, you're going to need a saucepan with a lid. You will need a measuring cup and measuring spoons, and of course something to uh, stir your sauce from time to time. Uh, and then as far as the ingredients itself, you're going to need uh, some tomato ketchup. Uh, go with a good brand, not, uh, not one of the off brands because that's real thin and doesn't turn out as great. Worcestershire sauce some uh, tomato juice, honey, some cayenne pepper, an onion about the size of a baseball or so, a couple of whole limes, some garlic cloves, brown sugar, and some butter. And uh, we're going to turn this into just a absolutely outstanding tasting barbecue sauce that you can modify to go either uh, mild, medium, or hot, depending on how much cayenne pepper you want to add. Uh, so uh, let's head on into the kitchen and uh, start brewing this little concoction. First step is to get uh, our main ingredients prepped and for that we're going to do a little bit of cutting on our uh, onion that you can see I've already got prepped here and we're going to have to juice a couple of uh, lines here. So let me show you a couple trips, tricks on how to do that real quick. Um, for doing an onion, rather than cutting the individual slices and then cutting them up into a uh, uh, diced onion like you see here, it's a lot real easy to just flatten off the bottom so you have a base, start off the top, and then just start cutting down into the onion itself like so. We're going to do this in both directions. So we kind of create a little uh, um, hash cut here. And then we can take this whole thing, turn it on its side, and just cutting out the little slices. And there you go, you've got uh, diced onion. So we're going to do this because we're going to need this in the first step of, uh, of making our sauce. We need a lot of diced onion. So I'm going to finish this up and then we're going to come back and we're going to take care of the limes. Okay, I finished up the, uh, the dicing up the onion and of course I'm crying now. Now let's, uh, I'm going to show you a little trick on how to juice some uh, limes because we need the juice of two limes for our barbecue sauce. So you're going to take a lime and you're going to cut it in half, then you're going to take a fork, and I'm actually going to do this right over my container of, uh, this is the tomato juice and the Worcestershire sauce already um, uh, separated out and measured out, but now I'm just going to add all my wet ingredients to the same container. So you take a fork, cram it in, and you just start twisting and squeezing on the lemon as you do it. And it really gets the juices out really quickly and efficiently. See if I can do this without uh, squirting juice on the lens here. There we go. So I just juiced half a lime, and I'm going to continue that uh, for both of these limes and just add it directly to the tomato juice and Worcestershire sauce here. At this point, I have uh, most of the ingredients measured out and separated, uh, so it's almost time to head on over to the cauldron. So um, I've got my diced onion. This is the uh, tomato sauce, uh, I'm sorry, tomato juice 
Worcestershire sauce and lemon juice. Got my brown sugar and cayenne pepper. Uh, I'm going to be making mine uh, a, a medium today, so a little bit warmer than uh, the mild. And I've got my garlic ready to go right here. And as I'm adding this, I'm actually going to measure out the honey after a little bit. And I have the, uh, the ketchup ready to go as well. So uh, let's head on over to the stovetop and uh, start cooking. We have moved on over to the uh, stove now, so let's get started with that. I've got two tablespoons of uh, salted butter. I'm just going to go ahead and drop that right in. And then we are going to uh, add our uh, onions. And we are going to saute these until they are uh, translucent. Which would take a few minutes or so. And once these are uh, tra uh, sautéed and translucent, we are going to add uh, basically all of the other ingredients and then uh, bring this to a boil and then uh, allowing it to uh, bring it to a boil, then lowering the temperature and allowing it to simmer uh, for about 30 to 45 minutes uh, just to allow the flavors and spices to mix around as well as evaporate off some of the, uh, uh, the water content to thicken this up. So uh, we will be right back here in a few minutes when these are sauteed and ready to go and we will start adding all of the other ingredients. Alright, we have the, uh, the onions sauteed to where they are um, starting to get a little bit translucent. So now it is time to start adding the rest of the ingredients. I'm not going to lower the heat yet because we want to get all these ingredients in here mixed up uh, and then bring it to a boil before we lower the temperature um, to, uh, to let it simmer. So let's start adding the other ingredients, starting off with the beer. Ah, the best ingredient that's going in this thing. Then we have the uh, tomato sauce, Worcestershire sauce, uh, and the, um, the limes that we had uh, juiced earlier. I have the garlic. This is finely minced garlic, about four, four cloves. Then we have the, um, the brown sugar and the cayenne pepper, which is going to give us sweetness and its spice. And at this point, I am going to start stirring this up on my whisk to get the, um, the brown sugar and the cayenne pepper, um, well, mainly the sugar, dissolved into the liquid. And then we are going to add the tomato or the ketchup. The only ingredient you're not going to watch me add today is going to be the honey because it is so thick that after I add the ketchup, I'm going to wash out the measuring cup um, and then measure out the appropriate amount of honey, throw it in the microwave to liquefy it a little bit to make it a lot easier to uh, get into the saucepan. So here we go with the ketchup. And then the next step, obviously, is going to be um, the honey. We will bring this thing to a boil and then lower it to a simmer. So let me get that, uh, that honey mixed in here and we will return in a moment. Well, we have all of our ingredients added now. Uh, throwing the honey in the microwave makes it a lot easier to pour out of that measuring cup because you thin it out a little bit with that heat. So uh, I'm going to let the, I'm going to stir it up real well and then I'm going to let it come to a boil. Um, just as it comes to a boil you're going to want to uh, reduce the, the heat to uh, low so that it can simmer uh, anywhere between 35 and 45 minutes. Uh, once it comes to a boil we're going to put the lid on it but leave the lid uh, kind of cockeyed because the lid's mainly there to keep things from splattering all over the place as this thing bubbles in the cauldron, uh, but we want to allow a lot of this uh, water content to evaporate off, because uh, right now you can see it's really thin, and barbecue sauce is supposed to be thick. So uh, grab another Guinness. Uh, you're going to need it while you wait. 
and uh, let's wait for this to come to a boil and then reduce it to a simmer. Well, here we are. We've got the, uh, the barbecue sauce that is coming to a boil right now. It's starting to get a little frothy on the top. So at this point, we are going to lower the temperature to uh, pretty much medium, medium low. And we are going to let this simmer uh, for between 30 and 45 minutes. We'll come back and check on it to see how the thickness is doing. And of course, while we do this, we are going to cover it, but we're going to cover it um, kind of off-center a little bit. You want to make sure you cover it because uh, if this is going to kind of bubble and squeak over the next uh, 40, uh, 30 to 45 minutes, and it will splatter all over the place, and you don't want to uh, upset your uh, husband, wife, partner, or worst-case scenario, your mother for destroying the, uh, the stovetop. Uh, but you want to allow the moisture that is uh, cooking here to escape so this thing can thicken up. So we'll come back in, I would say, uh, 20 to 30 minutes to check on this and see where we are at. Okay, we're at about the uh, half hour mark now. So now is a good time to uh, check out how things are going. You can see we've got uh, a nice little layer of uh, froth going on the top and it has been simmering nicely it's starting to thicken up go ahead and grab a spoon and take a small portion out and just put it off to the side and let it cool off a little bit because now will be your opportunity to uh, to taste this to see how it is on the spiciness scale uh, if you this would be the time that if you wanted to uh, kick it up a notch um, you can add some more cayenne pepper because you want to make sure that you allow that to simmer uh, before it's done so let's give this a taste here. Oh, that's perfect. Just enough kick to uh, to let you know that you've had some of Jeff's barbecue sauce, but not so much to uh, make it intolerable if you have a lot of sensitive sensi sensitivity to uh, hot sauces. So I'm going to let this simmer for uh, another 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes or more. Uh, just to let it thicken up a little bit and then we're going to uh, pretty much be done and ready to uh, to bottle this stuff up. Well I ended up going the full 45 minutes to get this to thicken up to where it uh, is acceptable. So now it's time to just turn off the heat, let this cool, and then we will transfer this over to our storage containers. Guinness, the perfect base for this barbecue sauce. And there we have it. We got our finished barbecue sauce. Uh, got a, it makes a, enough to easily fill a quart size uh, mason jar and then a couple of smaller ones if you wanted to uh, take some of your extra and give it to uh, family or friends. Now this is perfect for uh, glazing your pork ribs or your chicken lollipops or uh, basically any other thing that you're going to use your barbecue sauce for. You will notice some differences though that with homemade uh, barbecue sauce um, it is going to uh, develop a little skin on the top when it is left out and exposed which is perfectly okay and it is going to be a little chunkier um, than your store-bought barbecue sauce because we don't puree all of the ingredients so we're going to get some nice little chunks of onion uh, and garlic on whatever we're putting our barbecue sauce on. So uh, hope you enjoy that recipe and uh, good luck making it perfect uh, uh, accent to whatever it is you're throwing on your barbecue or smoker. So this is uh, Jeff with Smoke Meat with Jeff. Till next time, have fun on your smoker. One final note that I, uh, I kind of noticed as I was reviewing the video, you will notice that the barbecue sauce still does uh, appear to be fairly um, uh, water-like and liquid. Well this is still very hot. Uh, as it cools off it will thicken up. If you're a little concerned about that, you can just uh, cook it a little bit longer or simmer, simmer it a little bit longer to really thicken it up. But uh, believe me, this will thicken up as it cools off. In fact, this is a little, little too hot to, uh, to continue to hold right now. So uh, have fun.